testing golf clubs for a living it can be difficult. Yeah, that's right, I did say that, but someone's got to do it. I don't think anybody ever going to feel sorry for me, are they? Okay, I admit it, wrong word used. Impactful on your game is what I should have said. Because I change my golf clubs more often than I change my pants, which means my personal golf suffers for the cause. I'm still not getting any words of sympathy, am I? In fact, let's do something a bit different. Post your comments down below, sympathy or no sympathy. Let's see how many posts we can get in that comment section. Well, for the past three months, I have been able to keep one club, at least in my bag, consistently to see if I can provide you with a more long-term evaluation and also give some stability in at least one part of my game. Come on, come on. There's some shots that you just hope don't go in because, uh, you know, sceptical everybody is. That'd look horrendous if that had gone in. That club was in fact my putter. It was from Lab Golf, and it's this rather weird looking Mez One. Roll out. Oh. Right on cue, eh? That's no uh, five takes, by the way. That's just literally ball down, hit it, hole it. Impressive, eh? And like I said, this thing is far from conventional and it needs some, well, commitment to the concept. You see, this putter is non-conventional in a number of ways. The most noticeable difference that is, well, very different that we know in terms of tradition is the way that this putter is balanced. Yeah, very different in the way this thing is balanced. In fact, Lab Golf stands for Lie Angle Balanced. And what it means is it's very different to what we know as the norm because what we've always been uh, accustomed to is either a face balance putter or a, um, a toe hang putter with variable degrees of toe hang. But this thing balances completely different. It's almost a reversal of everything we know. And uh, I bought into that concept from a video I watched off of Mez's website. And if you want more detail on the exact science behind that, either look at my original review or go and check out Mez's website. But it's quite an interesting theory. And I certainly bought into that theory at a cost. That cost was 430 pound and I invested in, uh, the Mez model, of which there are several to choose from. Oh my God, seriously. I almost feel guilty when these things go in. Like I said earlier on, I wish they'd miss it sometimes. And I suppose the question is, was it a worthwhile investment or not? Now, if you are a regular viewer of the channel, then you'll have seen this putter feature over the last few months. And uh, I've also held quite a lot of putts with it. The question is, would I have hold just the same amount of putts with any other putter? Now, I know I've already asked for some comments below with regards to uh, your sympathy towards my woes. That should be interesting. But I'd also like to know what are your thoughts on this Mez putter? Just the concept and the theory behind it. Is that something you potentially buy into? And are you uh, either going to give this a try? Have you give it a try? or indeed, is it in your bag? Please let me know. So these are my thoughts after three months with Mez Putter. What have I found? Well, first of all, right from the very get-go, there is something you're gonna have to, uh, well, you have to get used to, and that is the address position, because it's very different on a number of levels, but the most uh, notable one is the way in which this uh, putter grip enters into the shaft at a rather weird angle. And that's very noticeable at address from above because it creates effectively a forward press. So when you address the ball, you have no option but to address in that position. Now it's weird, it's odd, because what I would normally do as uh, with my regular putter is I would address the ball and I would push my hand slightly forward. That makes alterations to the way the club head lies and it has other impacts as well. So I like the fact that first of all, this puts me in that position straight away, but it does take some getting used to. The second thing is, is I think it's fair to say that all of the putters are center shafted. Certainly in a mess model they are, and I'm pretty sure it's the same with every one of their models. Now again, 
I had never really used a center shafted putter in all the time that I had played golf. So once again, that was something that I had to get used to. It wasn't something that I was used to seeing. And then of course, the way in which that face is balanced, it's noticeable and it's different. The question is, is it beneficial? And do you eventually get used to something that is very different from tradition? Turn a bit. We finally missed one. Well, for me, the answer to that question is yes, I did, but it does take some perseverance because like I said, it is very different. In my early rounds with the Mez putter, I did find it very strange and I did wonder whether or not I would ever be able to get used to it. Watching the videos that Mez or rather Lab Golf produced was really informative for me because what they basically request that you do or attempt to do is you've really got to let the sort of putter head and the way it's balanced do its own thing and I watched a video where it basically said lighten the grip and let the club head swing almost in a pendulum motion and have little effect on it as possible as you can with your hands and you have to really lessen the grip really light in terms of and I just let the putter head I commit to it and let the putter head swing like I say as a pendulum once I committed to that and I started holding putts in doing so then you've got a you've got to believe in it You've just got to address the ball, even with short putts, and you've just got to commit to that process. Let that putter head just swing on its own merits. And trust me, in my opinion at least anyway, it works. It's worked for me no end. And the only time that I've really struggled with the putter is when I've tried to manipulate things, when my hands have interfered. So it's a case of rocking the shoulders, take them hands out the equation altogether. And like I said, let that putter head almost remains square in its own right, just the way as it's explained from Lab Golf in that little revealer video, if you do take the time to watch it. A lot of people would be uh, very sort of, um, well, I would say pessimistic at least in terms of the way they view that video. I would say it is without doubt rings true in what I've seen in terms of performance with the Mez putter in my hands. Now, one of the things that surprised me when I bought this putter was I expected the head of this to be a lot bigger than it actually was and in fact it's quite a compact mallet style but there has been an addition to the lineup that addition is the Mez 1 Max it's a slightly bigger profile and suggests that it offers even more stability than the current Mez model that I have in my hand so uh, that could be an interest in addition now, before I give my final verdict on whether I think this was a good investment or not in my Mez putter, I think one more thing I just want to talk about, and that's the face itself, because a lot is talked about the way uh, this uh, moves away from tradition in so many ways, but the face and the quality of the build of the product itself is exceptional. And it's a consistency out the face, which I like. I mean, we've put it, or I've put it, like I said, for several months, my distance control has been, uh, well, it's been really good and very, very consistent. Like we all know there's no putter that's going to hold every putt for you but what you do want to see at least is consistency of roll that kind of thing because if you're looking to get consistent with your putting what you want to be doing is two putting at least and uh, certainly eliminating those ones that go just a little bit too far or a little bit too short and as i said it's been very consistent indeed my verdict is this that yes i am hugely impressed by the mez putter i'm hugely impressed by the concept I bought into it. I've since found there's a couple of other uh, putter manufacturers. I think Seymour have done something very similar. And very recently, Evenroll have also introduced this similar sort of uh, balanced face into their putter range. So I think it's something we could see more of. And uh, hats off to Lab for producing something that is um, a little bit different in terms of theory, but one that for my mind certainly works and uh, has its merits. What you've got to decide if you're considering buying one of these putters is are you prepared to adapt to some of the things that I've mentioned in the video, which are a little bit different than what perhaps you are used to. But for me, without doubt, when we consider, there's a lot of money for a putter, but when we consider what we invest in the likes of a driver right now and how many times we use that compared to our putter, then uh, it's a silly argument to suggest really we shouldn't be looking to put more money into our putter than we do perhaps into our driver because this is certainly something that can save you a few shots. Right, that's me done. Don't forget, sympathy or no sympathy, I know what it's going to be. Thanks for watching. I enjoyed this one. I'll see you all soon.